Before beginning, it is imperative for us to acknowledge that the land in which we are standing on and speaking of was also stolen from the Tequesta people. We honor them and seek atonement for the sacrifices that they were forced to make of their land, their lives, their history, and their culture. I stand before you as a protector of the legacy of our ancestors, our elders, our children, and generations yet to come. Quick confession, I haven't always been about this climate change life. I used to think that it was all about the polar bears and the sea turtles. And as cute as they are, they were not my priority. As a single mother, my priority was making sure that my children made it home safely and that we had an affordable place to live and that we had clean drinking water my priority was survival, not the sea turtles, as with a lot of people in my community. But climate change is about survival. There has been a 400% increase in tidal flooding between 2006 and 2016, which is encouraging more affluent populations to move inland. We have had 40 additional 90 degree days per year since 1970. Here in Miami, instead of using the money from the forever bond to build affordable housing in Overtown, Luxury condos are being built all around, adding more concrete and ultimately creating even more heat. Developers are building our community for the people they want to come, as opposed to improving the access for people whose families who have lived here for generations. Median income is less than $25,000, and the average rent for a one bedroom is about $1,000 per month. So residents are being priced out, pushed out, and displaced. Climate gentrification is a systemic and legalized cultural genocide. One elder shared that Overtown and our people here have become an unwilling part of a real life monopoly game. Legacy would be respected in other more affluent communities. I love to sit at the feet of our elders and many have expressed the heartbreak of being pushed out. They share how many places that were once a huge part of their lives and stories are gone. They have been and are being destroyed without input from the community members, all in the name of a culture of power politics, and money. They fear the memories and stories will be lost. Overtown is not only changing, it's changing quickly in a way that current community members can't keep up with. And so for solutions, we turn to a conversation between Baba Michael and I. You know, because of lack of political education and lack of education period in our communities and not understanding that we are domestic colonized people on foreign soil. And that you can't, no one can get away from that. So we always been put in a, a mode of survival, you know, you, you know, surviving from one generation to another, hoping that things get better. So we never really have the type of articulation to really explain how we got into this predicament. Uh, what we call uh, political tricksters mm -hmm. can come into a community, uh, of, uh, and we call them uh, 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 politicians who have been elected as developers. You know, and come in and say, well, we're going to fix up the community and stuff. And next thing you know, the people are being pushed out of the community. So when you look at climate change, you have to look at it from a broad spectrum. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, as the sea level rise, people running from the beach, running to the high waters. You know, I mean, running to the high land. You have to realize that our communities have been made and exploited and oppressed for what the benefit of people who don't live in the community. So therefore, if your community is in that type of situation, your community becomes poorer and poorer, more run down, because what? You don't take the resources and build your community up. That's, what we, that's why we say the most important fight for us to save ourselves is community control. It must be political education, it must be economics, we must save our culture, we must fight for our children's future, because that's what we're really talking about, the future. What kind of future will they have? Will there, will there be another future of them you know, marching and begging all over again? No, we have to start to really build, as Marcus Garvey talked about, as Malcolm X, Queen Mother Moore, people like that. We're real, real serious about us having power over our own lives. And if we don't have power over our lives, and we're always waiting for somebody else, then we can forget it. But we, we got to start solving the problems of climate gentrification. So we have become a welfare country of people thinking that all you got to do is get the government involved and the government going to solve the problem. Well, the only thing the government has done is become bigger and bigger and more exploited. Mm -hmm. So the power of the people has been taken away from the people because the people now are dependent on the government to do what they can do. People need to really remember Katrina, you know. It, it wasn't 24 hours after Katrina passed by that the people who lived in those communities were immediately called refugees. Mm -hmm. Immediately. That right. was designed. Right, right. Because it's 
so many overtimes, mm -hmm. you know, wherever you, black people live, Smoketown, Buttermilk Bottom, you name it. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our, our communities have been historically disruptive and pushed, we've been pushed out, mm -hmm. you know, so yes, we must talk about it and organize against it. Mm -hmm. The basis, education, organization, mobilization, and then the ability to establish structures that are in our community that fight against climate change, that bring about a new community. We have to start building differently. We have to start teaching differently about what's happening to our community. And we have to start fighting harder for our community and demanding that people that we, that, that we put into office do what we say, not what other people say. And yet, everything that we do in this moment mm -hmm. to heal ourselves, to heal our world, to right wrongs that have occurred in this moment, the work that we do towards that helps to heal seven generations that came before us True. and seven generations yet to come. So true. Sometimes these issues can seem so big and yet it helps to remember that everything that we do in this moment can either help or harm seven generations that came before us and seven generations yet to come. The choice is ours.